look, they're pretty jacked up about the Bucs. It's been 13 years since this team was in the playoffs. You get Tom Brady and you go to the Super Bowl, the first one in their home stadium, you know, of any Super Bowl team. I mean, that's that's pretty heady stuff. So uh, they're living a fairy tale right now. They just wish that uh, more people could participate in. We're living in a dream and we can't wake up. Is that Hey guys, Pedro V here. New video about the Super Bowl 55. This one might be a little far-fetched, but just bear with me here, okay? So we got the Buccaneers and the Chiefs. The Buccaneers representing the Skull and Bones. Florida, we got the whole Florida home state X, which symbolizes X marks the spot. And the Chiefs, you look at their logo, it's like an arrow. So you got the arrow pointing at the X which X marks the spot. X marks the spot. And you got the symbolization of the Skull and Bones, which is also the Skull and Bones Society as well. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so sacred we can't talk about what it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are gonna go watch. Sure they are, I don't know, I haven't seen the web. Number 322? <laughs> The Super Bowl picture just became a little clearer now that reports suggest 22,000 fans will be allowed at Raymond James Stadium for game day. That's about a third their normal capacity. 22,000, that's about a third their normal capacity. If you want to look at that aspect of it. So now, all eyes are on Florida. And like we said, this is the first time ever that a team playing in the Super Bowl is playing in their home stadium, which happens to be here in Florida. And with Florida being an important aspect of it all, because that is where they're trying to have Trump stay at Mar-a-Lago. Today, Donald J. Trump gave his final goodbye to the White House and headed to Florida. But will Mar-a-Lago be his final stop? We have Trump who has a, a target on his back, right? And they're programming Iran or Russia, even China, to be the ones responsible for something to happen. Tensions high in the Middle East, thousands protesting to mark one year since Iran's top general, Qasem Soleimani, was killed in a U.S. drone strike. Meanwhile, Iran's foreign minister says Tehran will begin 20% uranium enrichment at a nuclear facility. All of this is happening as the Pentagon reverses a decision to bring home an aircraft carrier after 10 months in the Persian Gulf. So now this false flag event is now manifesting itself either here or somewhere down the road, but it is definitely coming to the forefront. Council approved an event zone around the game that will control everything from what kind of tents can be placed in the neighborhood to signs that can be put up. I think the, the NFL tries to impose these conditions on a Super Bowl city like ours, and I'm sure they do it every year, uh, to try and control everything that's going on. Tampa City Councilman John Dingfelder says he's a football fan, but isn't convinced the event zone is a good idea. And in our case, our stadium is surrounded by people's homes. And I don't think it's appropriate for us to impose these significant restrictions on people and their residences. We are doing everything that we can to keep the community safe, but there's that level of personal responsibility. And in my opinion, the NFL has to change, or you know what's gonna happen? Their business is gonna go to hell. So now there was a Simpsons episode, which shows a winning football team. And last year, people tried to make their own connections or speculations that it was a 49ers. But looking at it now, their colors are very similar to the Buccaneers. Now back to what I was saying before, now we have the whole programming of the Florida destruction. And I believe this whole event is part of a warning. Hey, what is the explosion? So over at Raymond James Stadium, they've been uh, kind of transforming that into what it's going to look like for the Super Bowl. So the parking lot has been completely just transformed. Of course, we have the fan. At each, uh, so over at Raymond James Stadium, they've been uh, kind of transforming that into what it's going to look like for the Super Bowl. So the parking lot has been completely just transformed. Of course, the parking lot has been completely just transformed. Of course, the parking lot has been completely just transformed. Of course, we now are getting word that the 
fragment has hit Central Florida. Oh my God. And this year, we have a home game at the Super Bowl. It's gonna be huge. The city's probably gonna explode, but it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be fun. Come on, let's go. But the sky's on fire. Jets roaring through the sky is a blast anytime, but this is different. Well, as you can imagine, uh, when you get the opportunity to fly over the Super Bowl, there's no shortage of volunteers. But so Lieutenant Colonel Chris McAleer, call sign Nike, called in three planes for the Super Bowl flyover. The B-2 stealth bomber, invisible. The B-1B Lancer, big and supersonic. And the iconic B-52, rarely have all three flown together. All three of these put together uh, really represent our nation's front line of deterrence to our enemies. But the end game is the big game on Sunday. The country is still in a crisis, and there's a dark winter still ahead. The town manager of Palm Beach says there is a legal review underway into President Donald Trump using Mar-a-Lago as a permanent home. The road closures around Mar-a-Lago are already in place ahead of his arrival, and the town's police department says it's trained and prepared for any security concerns about the presence of a former president. Now, the private club Donald Trump purchased back in 1985 has been called the Winter White House, has been called the Winter White House, has been called the Winter White House, well, President Trump told us that he wasn't going to go anywhere uh, when he left the White House. No, he said, the uh, long, dark winter. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. There was a time when a pirate was free to make his own way in the world. But our time is coming to an end. Okay, so you had Donald Trump, who used the bands. It's the end of the world as we know it at an event in D.C. It was in reference, of course, to the Iran nuclear deal. Now, some of you can do your own digging as well and maybe even connect some of this to add on because this is a spiritual war and we all must be ready for everything taking place. They have been doing a lot of programming and manifesting the so-called Antichrist. Can you guess who's coming? It's not just the weekend. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Miley Cyrus getting the party started with the NFL's first ever TikTok tailgate pregame for healthcare heroes. So I wanna really point that out for you guys. Just a quick short video. You give me your thoughts. What do you think this will all symbolize? What this all means? And with that being said, have faith, remain vigilant, and God bless you all.